And welcome, everyone. I think you're really going to like this. And it's something that you've really got to pay a lot of attention to. It's not something you learn overnight. But you get study in this, and you can literally have anything you want. Now, if you look here, I've been studying this for 60 years. Uh, I was 60 years. I started my 60th year last October. And I think, you know, this is something you should study all the time. It's not just something you study once in a while. If you look at this for a moment, I think that Neville put it very well. He said, you're only limited by weakness of attention and poverty of imagination. I want you to think about that for a moment. Really give that some thought. You're only limited by weakness of attention. Do you know, I have quoted um, Dr. Werner von Braun on numerous occasions. When John Kennedy, when he was the president of the United States, asked the good doctor, the father of the space program, greatest scientist, you know, what it would take to build a rocket that'll carry a person to the moon and bring him back safely to Earth. He answered him in five words. He said, the will to do it. Now, will is a mental faculty. You have perception, the will, reason, imagination, memory, and intuition. These are all our higher faculties. This is what makes us who we actually are. This is what separates us from all the rest of the animal kingdom. And Neville's saying, you're only limited by weakness of attention. Uh, Werner von Braun was telling President Kennedy, all you need is to give it your full attention, the will to do it. See, the will gives us the ability to concentrate. I don't know what you want, but I do know this. If you can think it, and you can let yourself get emotionally involved with it, and you stay focused on it, you can have it. Now that's a very basic concept, but it's not the easiest thing for most people to do. But the more you study it, the better you're going to get at it. But I love this, you're only limited by weakness of attention and poverty of imagination. You've got to activate your imagination. A lot of people just use their imagination for, gosh, I hope this doesn't happen, or I hope that doesn't happen. They're letting it go in the wrong direction. Our imagination is the most marvelous. He'll, in, uh, in Think and Grow Rich, he'll say the imagination is the most marvelous, miraculous, inconceivably powerful force that the world's ever known. It's, it'll create anything for you. It'll take you anywhere. Your imagination will take you anywhere and it'll give you anything you want. That's a beautiful thing to know. Now, you know, everyone has a story, and I'm not an exception. I'd like to share my story with you, some of my story, not all of it, but some of it. And it has a lot to do with when I started to understand this law, the law of vibration. Do you know the secret talked about the law of attraction? The Secret was a runaway, it went viral, a very bestseller. It's reported a half a billion people have been impacted by the movie or the book, The Secret. Now, I was very fortunate to have a key slot in that movie. Uh, it's been often said that I'm better known in Iraq than I am in Indiana. <laughs> and uh, I think that's true. This is the primary law right here. The law of attraction starts with the law of vibration. And let's take a look at where the law of vibration starts. It starts right in your own mind, right in your own head. Your mind activates brain cells. And when those brain cells are activated, you're impact. You impact the whole universe. Do you know that thought waves are cosmic waves that penetrate all time and space? 
You see, as you get studying this and as you start to get into it in some depth, the ideas are so vast, they're so huge, and you think, this is about me? See, I don't think the vast majority of us have ever been introduced to who we really are. I think that if a person started to show some promise in developing a, a healthy self-image, they were told that they were being conceited. Don't be like that. That's not the way you should be. And, of course, we get a lot of other bad information in there. But this law of vibration starts in our own marvelous mind. And I'd recommend that you start really studying this. If you just stick with us, I, what I've done, I've taken some of the most complicated material and I've reduced it to the most simplistic form because that was the only way I was going to understand it and I had marvelous teachers that helped me get that. Now, Lincoln said something absolutely incredible. Lincoln said many things that are incredible. But he said, to believe in the things you can see and touch is no belief at all. But to believe in the unseen is a triumph and a blessing. Think of that. To believe in the things you can see and touch. We've got things we can see and touch. That's no belief at all. To believe in the unseen is a triumph and a blessing. Do you know the biggest part of you you'll never see? The real you you'll never see. Now we've got to start to, we've got to start to understand this. We've got to start to get it in the right slot in our mind. We've got to realize that there's so much to us um, that we don't, we don't really get, we don't understand. Our educational system is so lacking in teaching us who we are. You can study psychology, but most people that study psychology have never really got to know themselves. I'm talking about in depth, who you really are, your relationship to the whole scheme of things, or your relationship to God. You're talking about an infinite power, and you're created in that image. We have infinite potential locked up within us. What we want to do is learn how to use it for good in our life. This man changed my life probably as much as anyone in all the years I've been here. Leland Val Van de Waal he introduced me to some enormous ideas. That's a slide of Val working in a seminar that he and I and Mark Victor Hansen, Jack Canfield started. I come up with the idea on a plane. I phoned Mark Victor Hansen. And then we got a hold of Val and Jack and got other people. And we put together a thing called the Million Dollar Forum. And the idea behind it was we were going to teach people how to earn a million dollars by setting up multiple sources of income. It was an absolutely phenomenal program. Now, we had some phenomenal teachers in that program. I mean, it was really a mind blower. It was, uh, it was so good. And Val, of course, wowed them all. He's gone now, God bless him, but he, made, he had such an impact on my life. And he helped me, he got me into things that I never thought of in my life. He was the one that first told me about this. He says, those who tell stories rule society. He said, learn lots of stories, Bob. Because he said, you are a story. You are a story. Now think about that. You are a story. You're a mass of energy and you function on frequencies. You are. Now think of that. You may not think of yourself that way. And then you might say, what's this got to do with anything? Well, if you really understand it, you can attract more money. All the money you want, as a matter of fact. You can attract good health. You can attract great relationships. You can attract phenomenal business. I sat down on a uh, sofa in a room by myself, a little house on Maplewood Lane in 1973, and I said, I'm going to build a company that all operates all over the world. The lady that introduced us, Mikey Steller is our chief operating officer, and she's also our marketing director. And... 
I sat down to watch television one night, which I very rarely do, and I only watched it for a few minutes, and I thought, I don't want to watch this. And as I was getting up, my phone rang, and it was Mikey on the phone. This would be maybe two, three weeks ago. And she said, Bob, I just got a call from Betty. We're in every country in the world. I thought, wow. I wrote that in 1973. I was intellectually involved and I got emotionally involved, but I was it. I was the company. There was no one else. I was by myself. That's what I wanted to do. If you don't know what you want to do, you're going to drift. You're just going to float around like a leaf on a windy day. You're not going to go in anywhere. You are a mass of energy and you function on frequencies. And Val really helped me understand that. Val van der Waal had a um, very strong spiritual understanding. And he said, Bob, if you take a picture of yourself with a curly camera, you're going to see yourself as a glistening, radiating, gleaming form. Semyon Kurlian was a um, Russian photographer back in 1934, and he perfected Kurlian photography, what, what we call now Kurlian photography after him. When you photograph mass, you can photograph the energy coming from it. You can photograph a, uh, a plant, and you'll see there's a vibration coming from the plant. Everything vibrates. A garden rock is vibrating. Everything moves. Nothing rests. Now, why am I telling you this? I'm telling you because I think it's a mighty important thing for you to really understand. You see, energy functions on frequencies, and that's what you're made of. Your body is a mass of living energy. A frequency is a level of vibration. That's exactly what a frequency is. There is an infinite number of frequencies. Remember I said you can think, activate brain cells, and you send off a charge of energy. Now stay with me here. This is so important, yet it's so misunderstood. There's an infinite number of frequencies. Every one of those little purple lines are level, represent a level of vibration. Now, do you know, Albert Einstein... <laughs> God bless him, he sure had his act put together, didn't he? He said, everything is energy, and that's all there is to it. Match the frequency of the reality you want, and you cannot help but get that reality. It can be no other way. This is not philosophy, this is phys physics. Now, this is what we teach here at the Proctor Gallagher Institute. We teach you the primary cause of the good that you desire. You take care of the cause, the effect always takes care of itself. In fact, Emerson said the law of cause and effect was the most important law in the universe. I don't know if I agree with that, but he's certainly pretty close to it if he isn't right. Everything is energy. Now think, that's all there is to it. Everything is energy. Everything. Match the frequency of the reality you want. Yet you cannot help but get that reality. It can be no other way. This is not philosophy. This is physics. Earl Nangiel said essentially the same thing in 1959. He brought out the strangest secret record. Right at the beginning of that recording, he talks about the good Dr. Albert Schweitzer being interviewed at a London, at an airport in London when he got off a plane. And they asked the good doctor, what was wrong with man today? He said he thought about it for a while. And then he said, man simply doesn't think. We do not think. You say, well, everybody thinks. No. Understand mental activity does not constitute thinking. You have five senses. You can see, hear, smell, taste, touch. When any of those five senses are affected, it causes mental activity. 
That is not thinking. It causes pictures to fly in your mind. That is not thinking. If you heard a siren in the background right now, you might see a fire truck or an ambulance on the screen of your mind. That's not thinking. You have higher faculties. These higher faculties, most people know little about. Oh, they hear the word every now and then. You have perception, the will, reason, imagination, memory, intuition. These higher faculties are what literally separate us from all the rest of the animal kingdom. All the rest of the little animal kingdom, they're completely at home in their environment. They blend in. You and I are totally disoriented in our environment. We're totally disoriented. That is because we have been given the godlike ability to create our own environment. Charlie Tremendous Jones was a great man, just a phenomenal public speaker, great teacher, and always promoting books. He said that he believes that we're the, we're the composite of the books we read and the people we associate with. I'm inclined to agree with him. Well, as you start to listen to Earl and The Strangest Secret, a lot of things started to happen to me. And it changed all kinds of things in my life. Now, there's the two men that both ended up being mentors of mine because I, I worked with them. I worked very closely with them, but it was as a result of me listening to this recording. I was listening to this recording, and I thought, it would be phenomenal to work with them. Well, it was in 1966, I went to visit them. And um, I decided I want to work with them. And you see, it was what they were teaching me, what Val teach me, would teach me, that helped me understand how I had done what I did. You see, Ray Stanford sat down with me and he put an R in a sheet of paper. Then he put three letters down beside it, two H's and a W. Now he said, Bob, let the R represent results. And let the two H's and a W, happiness, health, and wealth. Then he asked me if I thought he was a happy person. I said, yeah, he seemed pretty happy to me. He said, did you ever see me sick? I had to admit I hadn't. He said, did you ever see me when I was broke? I had to admit I hadn't. This guy always had money on him, <laughs> quite a bit of it. He said, Bob, you're one of the most miserable people I've ever met. Now, this is in 1961. He said, you're always sick. He said, you don't have a terminal illness, but you've always got a cold or a headache or something. And he said, you're always broke. Now, he was so right. I was earning $4,000 a year. I owed $6,000. Now, I want you to think of this. At the time, I had two months high school. I um, had no business experience at all. I was 26. I had left school when I was 15. I worked all over the place. I was in the Canadian Navy. I worked in bars and in factories. Always dumb jobs. No wonder I was unhappy, sick, and broke. I studied nothing. I read nothing. He said, do you ever read anything? And I said, no, I can't read. And that's when he introduced me to this book. And he said, Bob, Napoleon Hill studied 500 of the world's most successful people over many, many years. And it was at the counseling of the richest man in the world that he did that, Andrew Carnegie. And he found there was a golden thread running through their life. And he, uh, he wrote The Laws of Achievement. I have The Laws of Achievement right here. Um, pull those four over a bit. And they are right there. There's eight little books. And that was The Laws of Achievement. Now, he wrote those at the request of Andrew Carnegie. Carnegie said it was a shame, like people like himself, who was the wealthiest man in the world, is going to their grave with all his knowledge locked up in their bones. He said nobody's ever organized the laws of achievement. 
It, and as a result, most people never achieve very much. And he got held to do it. Well, after he did it, then the, this book, The Laws or uh, Think and Grow Rich, came out of that. And this is what I was really into studying. Okay? You know that within a year, my income was at 175000 now, at the beginning, the end of this uh, meeting, Arash is going to be giving you a directive. And what I would suggest you do is listen very carefully to him. This is a goal card that I have my goal written on. I carry this in my pocket. Every time I put my hand in my pocket and touch that card, the picture that's in my mind flashes on the screen in my mind. I painted the picture in words on the card and it's tucked into cells in my brain. Well, that's how I went from earning 4,000 to 175, and I did it in less than a year. This is no formal education, no business experience. I had no idea what I was doing. In less than five years, I was over a million dollars a year. I had business operating in Toronto, Montreal, Boston, Cleveland, Atlanta, Sunday, in, in London, England. If you ask me how I did, I, I, I had no idea. I had no idea. I have found out since it was through the repetition of what I'm talking to you about right now. The action of repeating something that has already been said or written. Look it. Ray said to me, if you read this every day, every day, your life will change. He got me to commit to doing that. I committed I would do it. And God only knows why I've kept that commitment in my 60th year, every day. I don't read a lot of it. I just open and read something right here. That's just where I open it now. Remember, too, that all who succeed in life get off to a bad start. and They pass through many heartbreaking struggles before they arrive. The turning point in the lives of those who succeed usually comes at the moment of some crises, through which they're introduced to their other selves. Yeah, just, just read that. I mean, that's inspirational. You learn something from that. Well, 1968, I was their vice president of sales because that is something I wrote on the card. I decided I wanted to work with them. I wanted to work right beside them. And I had an office right beside the two of them. This is Vice President of Sales. And you know, Earl taught me something that is so valuable. And I want to share it with you. He said, you know, Bob, there's an enormous difference between knowledge and the experience. Now, I want you to think about that. Because when he sat down and explained this to me, and he said, before we agreed that you were going to come here, Bob, work we checked you out and that's when he told me he said you've got something very strong going for you that we need in our company and that's when he told me he said there's an enormous difference between knowledge and experience he said you see Bob if we read the book if we understand it, we can talk about what's in it. We have some knowledge. But he said experience is totally different. Experience is when you've done it. So you just don't think this is right information. You know it's the right information. What I teach here in, this, in our programs, I don't wonder if it works. I know it works. I'm going to be 87 in July, and I feel like I'm just getting warmed up. I have no intentions of slowing down. We are in millions of dollars. We operate all over the world. 
And I believe we share some of the most powerful information in the world. It's not just something I've studied. It's something I did. And it was only after I did a lot of this that I got help. Because one day in London, I was thinking, how in the heck did I do this? I was actually being irresponsible. I was earning over a million dollars. I'd go into the Playboy Club and play roulette on Hyde Park, right next to the Hyde London Hilton. And I didn't care if I lost the money because I knew where the money was. And one day I thought, you know, this is being very irresponsible. And I think, how the heck did this happen to me? Because you see, I had been struggling all my life up until I met Ray and he gave me the book to study. I had really been struggling my whole life. Never had a half decent job, had nothing really going for me. And here I am, owning a company that operates in seven cities, three countries. And I thought, how did it happen? And I couldn't figure it out. You see, I knew I wasn't lucky. I just inherently, I just had an innate awareness that I was not lucky. Um, I had been raised to believe if you're going to earn a lot of money, you've got to be really smart. I knew I wasn't really smart. I knew that. I knew a lot of, a lot of people thought I was, but I, I knew I wasn't really smart. And I'd been raised to believe if you don't go to school, you can't get a good job. I hadn't gone to school, and I didn't have a good job. I owned the whole company. And so I made up my mind that I was going to find out how my life changed. I wanted to know how it changed. And since that's what I wanted to know, that's what I started to find out. And that's where I learned the power of repetition. I was sitting with a lady, Catherine Weishupel. She's from Germany. She is in Germany. And I was sitting, I was sort of like a review meeting with her. She was a consultant of her company. And I uh, was sitting with Gina, my uh, assistant, and Catherine said, I believe success is 5% strategy and is 95% mindset. I had never heard that before. And I looked at her. I just intuitively knew she was right. I knew she was right. I would go back to my, when I was on the street in England, I don't even know if I knew what strategizing meant. I didn't feel bad not knowing. I mean, why would I know? I hadn't gone to school. I'd never been in business, you know? Success is 5% strategy, 95% mindset. You see, it's all about the mind. It's about your marvelous mind. Now, before tomorrow, I'm going to show you different concepts. I'm going to explain them so that if you had a 15-year-old, the 15-year-old would understand it, believe me. I pride myself in explaining things in a very simple manner. I don't want to complicate it. The people that taught it to me did that. They kept it very simple. It's about your marvelous mind. As Van de Waal taught me, he says, it's all in awareness, Bob. He said, there's a marvelous inner world that exists within us. And the revelation of such a world enables us to do, to attain, to achieve anything we desire within the bounds or limits of nature. Now, listen, this is vitally important information. I have never really studied finance. I'm not a financial guy. I've earned millions, literally millions of dollars. I think it's the easiest thing in the world to do. But I don't know how to manage money. I really don't. And I had my own company. But you know, if we go back to what Einstein said, if we get the picture and we get into the energy of the good we desire, you can't help it, have it manifest. Around 15 years ago, we had a lady come to the seminar who was a securities attorney. Oh, we've got a little friend here. And Sandy Gallagher was a securities attorney, very successful one. She became fascinated with what we were teaching. 
One thing led to another. I'm going down the road pretty fast here. And Sandy Gallagher became my business partner. Sandy is really a financial genius. She really is. She was buying and selling banks, turning banks public. Here's Bob, didn't know nothing about finance. And I attracted the perfect business partner for me. And um, I could just go ahead and do what I love doing. And I knew that our company was in good hands with that. And Sandy runs our company. She is the CEO and the president of the company. Now, why am I mentioning this? You've got to become aware that you can and will attract whatever you require to cause whatever picture you're holding in your mind to move into form. It's not an accident. There is a marvelous inner world that exists within us. And the revelation of such a world enables us to do, to attain, to achieve anything we desire within the bounds or limits of nature. Now, that law or that truth was taught to me by this man. He taught me so many things. God, I miss him. Val and I became great friends. We did a lot of work together. <laughs> well, he was a big guy. I've always been not that big. I think I was about 135 pounds and I started to work with him. We'd be out in the road and we both like buying clothes. We'd go into a clothes store. He said, again, men's clothes in here. <laughs> he was always ribbing me. He said, you know, this guy has to run around and shower to get wet. I think what he was doing was making excuses for him being as big as he was. But sure, a great guy. Now, he's the one that woke me up and he introduced me to this drawing. And he said, Bob, I want you to let that represent you. And he said, the big circle represents your mind. The top half of it is your conscious mind. And the bottom half is your subconscious mind. Now, you've been reading a lot about this, but I would suspect that you're very confused when you read a lot of this stuff. I think one of the best books on the subconscious mind is Dr. Joseph Murphy's book, The Power of the Subconscious Mind. It's a phenomenal book. If you don't have it, your library is not complete. And at any rate, he taught me this drawing, and he said, when you think of yourself, you've got to have an image. You can understand the mind is everything in your life. You learn how to work with it. Now he said, let's look at it this way. There's the mind, and there's a positive sign and a negative sign. Now he said, that actually represents a law of polarity, the law of opposites. And he said here, a power flowing into your consciousness. And when it flows into your consciousness, you create thoughts. You literally create thoughts from a power that flows into your conscious mind. You can originate thoughts. You can think something that no one has ever, ever thought before. You have a unique ability to do this. It's the thoughts that you think in your conscious mind that you impress upon your subconscious mind that causes you to feel the way you feel. Feeling is conscious awareness of vibration. Those feelings are expressed with and through your physical body. That causes the action which produces the result. Now, getting them all lined up is called attitude. Now, some people line up on the negative side. They're going to see what's wrong. And you know something? They're right. <laughs> There's something wrong. Other people go on the positive side. They see what's good. And they're right. There's something good. You can find what's right or wrong in anything. Doesn't matter what you're looking at. If you want to find what's wrong with my presentation, just keep looking. Take a pen and pencil because you're going to get busy. Or if you want to look at what's right, look at that. There's a power flowing into our consciousness, and we have the ability to think anything we want to think. And it's the thoughts we think that causes the feelings because we get emotionally involved with them. That causes the body to move into action and produce results. Now, this drawing is without question so valuable. 
and so misunderstood. And he went on to explain more about the conscious mind. He says, that's your thinking mind, Bob. Problem with most people is they don't think. They really don't think. Mental activity never constitutes thinking. I remember when he said that, and I never forgot it. He said, that is your thinking mind. It's also referred to as the educational mind. This is you I'm talking about. Now, as I keep building this idea, you're really going to get to know yourself, the world you live in, and the laws that govern your being a lot better. Yet, as you understand yourself a lot better, you're going to find your finances are going to improve. Your health is going to improve. Your relationships are going to improve. Your whole world starts to get better. The educated mind is also referred to sometimes as the intellectual mind. That's where all the intellectual factors are. Remember I told you what they were? You had perception, the will, reason, imagination, memory, and intuition. There's six of them. They are our mental muscles. And as you start to understand how to develop them, you can become a very powerful person. If you've ever been in a seminar that I've been in, you know that I can walk up to a person, I can tell them all about themselves. Everything that goes on the inside shows on the outside. It's your intuitive factor that enables you to read that. We hide nothing. And I always do this in a seminar to show off a little bit. I want really get your attention, see what I can do. But then I, what I really want to do is say, if I can do it, you can do it. See, we watch other people do things and we become fascinated if they're doing it really well. What we want to understand, if we want to do it, we can do what they're doing. The subconscious mind is your emotional mind. When you're emotionally upset, you've got the wrong ideas being fed into that part of your mind. Now, over here on this side, because you can think, you have the ability to choose. And because you can choose, you can accept or reject everything that comes down the road. Everything. Because there's a lot of crazy information coming at us through TV, newspapers, radio, television. Just overhearing restaurants and conversations if you can get into a restaurant. You can accept or reject everything and then you have the ability you can originate. Now the subconscious mind doesn't have the ability to do all those things. All those magnificent abilities are in the conscious mind. The subconscious, it must accept whatever you give to it. Must. It has no ability to reject. And get this. It's what you impress upon your subconscious mind that ultimately turns into results in our life. This is where we want to get our imagination going in high gear. Your subconscious mind cannot differentiate between what you've imagined and what's real. It has no ability to differentiate between the two. Unfortunately, most people imagine what's wrong. They think of what they don't want rather than what they do want. Now look here for a moment. Let's take that knowledge and we'll say this is you today. There's information coming at you today and it is terrible information. And it's flowing into your conscious mind. Now you have the ability to think, you have the ability to reject that. You can say, get out of here. And they all go away. But you know something? Most people don't do that. You want to know what they do? This is what they do. They're not thinking at all. Their subconscious mind is wide open. And that information goes right into the subconscious mind. Remember what we said about the subconscious? It has no ability to reject. All that negative information. Why do we leave the mind open like that? It's our paradigm. It's how we're programmed. We're literally programmed to live that way. Who, who, who did this? Why did they do this? Well, let's take a look. We'll just close the window on that for a minute. Let's go over here. This is you as an infant. Now, the more you understand this, the more you're going to be able to put tomorrow's lesson to work. Because I'm going to get in and I'm going to show you how you attract whatever you're in harmonious vibration with. This is you as an infant. Your subconscious mind was wide open when you arrived on the scene. I don't care what language was spoken around you, that's the language you learned. If there was more than one language spoken around you, you would learn more than one language. You see, everything that was going on around you, all the love, the hate, the prejudice, it was all programmed right into your subconscious mind. 
It's like in the song, a person has to be taught to love and hate. They must be taught before they're six or eight, before it's too late. You see, a child's mind is wide open. The child is being programmed. First of all, they were programmed genetically. That's why the child looks like they look. That's genetic conditioning. You see, it's a little bit of energy from mom and a little bit of energy from dad that formed the nucleus of you. And when those energies came together, that was the start of you. And then 280 days later, you made your day to view on the planet. But over that 280 days, there was a lot of programming going on. There's genetic program, and now there's an environmental program. And the paradigm, here we are, years later. People, you know, they've learned all kinds of information, but they're not doing it. The paradigm is in control. You see, the paradigm is... Um, it's, it's something most people don't understand. It's something everyone should understand. Every one of us has gathered an abundance of knowledge covering numerous subjects. However, most of what we've learned has very little, if anything, to do with our paradigm. Therefore, we frequently don't do what we already know how to do. I maintain that everyone that can hear my voice already knows how to at least double your income. You now you may be thinking, oh, that's not true. Oh yeah, listen, trust me. I've been there, I've done that. I've worked with thousands of people. I know how it works. We have superior knowledge, inferior results. That causes confusion and frustration. Now let's put our model up here and take a look. Here's a person here, they've got all this knowledge in their mind. They go to school, they get a ton of knowledge. But you know something? The knowledge doesn't match the results. Why is it that a person with a great formal education, worked in a good company for maybe 30 years, is struggling to meet a mortgage payment? Explain that to me. How does that work? They've gone right through our educational system, we're very dedicated to employees for maybe 30 or 40 years and they're having difficulty making a mortgage payment. Doesn't make sense, does it? Well, all they know isn't working for them because the paradigm is in control of them. Their results are nothing but an expression of the paradigm. That's all that conditioning that took place before they could even think. If you want to change your results, it's essential that you change the paradigm. That's absolutely essential. So as we get into the law of attraction tomorrow and show you how it's just an extension of the law of vibration, I would recommend you study it pretty closely because you see, you do have a paradigm. Oh, I do, everyone has. A paradigm is a mental program that has almost exclusive control over our habitual behavior. And think of this, almost all of our behavior is habitual. It's something to really understand. Now let's take a look at this. You can create your own economy. You can create the life you really want. Nothing tricky about it. Energy functions on frequencies. Remember we said that? A frequency is a level of vibration. There's an infinite number of vibrations, of levels of vibrations, of frequencies. An infinite number. Let's take a look again at what Albert Einstein said. So beautiful. Study this very carefully. Everything is energy, and that's all there is to it. Match the frequency of the reality you want, and you cannot help but get that reality. It can be no other way. This isn't a philosophy. It's physics. Look, at when I sat down and wrote out that we would have, our company would operate all over the world, 
Then I went to work. I had the idea, Mikey phones me. Now that was in 1973, it was just a couple of weeks ago she phoned, she's wearing every country in the world. Here's the trick. Decide what kind of a life you actually want. Quit fooling around with your life. It's too short. Then say no to anything that isn't that. Decide what kind of a life you actually want. Then say no to everything that isn't that. Now look here. Once are where it starts. You know where once come from? I'm going to tell you. Look at me. You have, at the center of your being, your spiritual DNA is perfect. There's perfection within us. Now that perfection is so much junk on top of it that we call a paradigm that it is difficult expressing itself. That spiritual perfection within us is always seeking expression with and through us. That's why we always want more. Now, when I was a little kid, my grandmother said, you always want more. You should be satisfied with what you've got. Grandma was an angel of God, but she was wrong. You should never be satisfied. Dissatisfaction is a creative state.